Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Okay, folks, so we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to take a look at an app, which I do very, very rarely, but this is the Pathfinder Adventures Rise of the Rune Lords app. Uh, this is the app iteration of the, uh, yeah, we'll say popular card game. It's kind of uh, fallen out of favor a bit. But it's still a favorite of mine, at least for solo gaming. Now, I'm going to take a moment here to pause and say that I am testing out new software from Android um, that allows you to record apps, games as you play. And there's probably some bugs going on here. And also with my own recording process. So I want to give you a taste of the music, and obviously that's playing. It might be a little bit annoying, but that's going to actually go away because music doesn't play as you're playing the game. Interestingly enough, it's just sort of menu music. But hopefully it's not too uh, uh, annoying and obtrusive. So, uh, this is, just to let you know, this is basically the, um, this is the game. This is the card game. If you've played the Pathfinder Adventure card game, uh, this is essentially the same game. Uh, and if you have played the Pathfinder Adventure card game, you're 90% of the way there. It is very close to that. In fact, I will say that while the tutorial, which I'm not going to show you, is fine and adequate... If I hadn't already played the card game, I wonder if I would have been lost, <laughs> because there are quite a little, uh, quite a lot of ins and outs in the Pathfinder Adventure card game, um, and it really helps to have played that first. But let me go ahead. I'm just sort of randomly going through menus as I talk. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. By the way, I'm just going to assume you have some familiarity with the card game before we jump into this. If you don't, you can watch my review of the first two core sets, which I'll link to somewhere on your screen. All right, so this is the open screen. As you see, there's some animation going on in the back here, and as you flip to different screens, um, I think it's very well done as far as the uh, artwork and what little animation there is going on. This is all art ripped from the game, the art of Wayne Reynolds, which is very good, uh, an old-school uh, D&D artist from the... Uh, well, not old-school, but third edition. Uh, so, yeah, we'll come back to this. This is actually the, uh, the store screen. I want to show you how to play first. So, let's see. Let's start a new story. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build a new party. That sounds like a good idea. Now, not all the characters are available. We're going to circle back to the store and I'll show you why. But uh, I have unlocked every character through hard work and diligence. Not really. I spent money. So, uh, just like in the base game, The Rise of the Rune Lords, you have potential access to all the different characters that come in that game. The two that you actually start off with without having to purchase anything are Marizial and Kyra, or Kira. I'm sorry I mispronounced both of those names, but I'm sticking to my guns on that. Uh, and as you can see, just like in the base game, you have uh, what would normally be represented with cards are these different skills, powers, the card lists, uh, and uh, the uh, list of the completed path of the rise of the rune lords i'll be interested to see what they do with future sets as far as whether they integrate together or not because they really don't with the physical game but any, as you can tell by the way the music stopped uh oh and by the way i'm sorry for this annoying icon here which you really can't do anything about but at least you don't have to look at my face which is another option so yeah, as you can tell you got all the different skills when you actually have the opportunity to level up so to speak and gain bonuses um, you'll have the opportunity to do so with little plus icons along the side to give yourself those uh, attribute bonuses over here you have powers very simply by clicking on each of the different powers there you go you can see what each of them represents so you got the hand size the proficiencies different special abilities and so on uh, and then if you click over to the card list, this tells you where you can actually, uh, how many of each card you can have, uh, again, with possible bonuses and so on. Now, as far as actually, well, I, I will say up in the top, you have corners of um, experienced and, oh, I'm sorry, get rid of that. See, that's why that thing's annoying. Uh, experienced and new so in my current campaign these are the only four people I've been using consistently yeah I know I'm not using the monk but by the way Sioni the sorceress is my favorite character bar none uh, but in any case the these four characters are the only ones that have been leveled up and so that's who I've been using the most um, but if you just want to go to new uh, you can do that. Well, let me show you experience, because I think this should show you my bonuses. Yeah, so I gave Marizial a plus one to strength and dexterity. Uh, and I also, I gave her a weapon proficiency, which in hindsight I realize is really stupid. And I wish that I hadn't, but c'est la vie. 
Um, and there you go, I increased the hand size. Uh, did I? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe I did. Of uh, Sioni here. I thought that option would be open. Or, oh, I definitely increased his hand size. It used to be four. Yeah, so when you, uh, for hand size, it kind of blocks off your previous choices. Um, all right, so that's an example of that. But when you're just putting together a new party, uh, a lot of the things in this game are just drag and drop. So you will physically just, uh, with the touch screen, bring the characters down. And I'll just go ahead and choose my standard party here. Uh, my tablet's not like the greatest in the world. It's a Nexus 7, by the way. I, I don't do a lot of app reviews, so I suppose I should tell you I'm running this game on Android um, with uh, Nexus 7. Uh, just so you know. So, okay, well, let's just go ahead and stick with that. Down here in the bottom of the screen, by the way, you will see Pass and Play and Permadeath. I haven't been brave enough to turn on Permadeath, but that's how it is in the core game, the card game, uh, or the physical game, uh, where characters can permanently die. I don't do that, so I can't really comment on that. Um, but there is a Pass and Play function to uh, play with multiple players, um, which uh, I also have not tried, but I can't imagine being very much different than what the game that I've played is. But in any case, um, any time in this game where you've uh, made a bunch of choices and you want to move on to the next area, you click on the light blue uh, triangle at the bottom of the screen. Uh, ba -ba -ba, the goblin attacks. There you go. Now you come to the world map. Now this is the Perils of the Lost Coast, which is the introductory adventure. Back to the map screen, so you do have some music playing and uh, I'm just going to go through and show you how the card play of the game works. Then we'll, I'll talk more about what I like and don't like about the app. So uh, Brigand Dune, over here you have the summary, just like you would on the cards in the game. You have the villain, you braille, the henchman, uh, th what happens during the scenario. The scenario reward and the adventure reward that you can potentially gain. Now you have down here, uh, if you click on the gears, you have just basic stuff like settings which we'll take a look at that real quick because I don't actually delve into this very much. Uh, it's most of the same things. Uh, treasure cards in the story mode. We'll get back to what that actually means in a moment. Uh, rules if you uh, just need to refresh yourself on how to play and so on and so forth. Uh, treasure chest, I'll get back to that when we go to the store screen. Your current gold, same thing. And then whether you want to forfeit or quit the game, uh, which you can do. Then if you want to get back to those character screens, you'll click on those other big icons in the bottom right corner, which will let you go back and take a look at your characters and uh, change around your party before you actually start the campaign if you want to. If you click on the card icon in the very bottom right corner, or the most to the right, I should say, here's where you can see the actual uh, deck layout for each of your characters. So... Um, this is the one part, um, I, I'll just give parts of the review of my final thoughts as I go along. This is one of the least intuitive parts of the game I've found. So, for the most part, it's fine. Um, I, I might just go ahead and show you how to play through a full scenario to, to, give, to better illustrate what I'm talking about. But you'll notice, just like in the real game, there are limits for what each character, by the way, you can click on their portraits at the top to cycle between the different characters and you see their loadout will change. So you have the the numbers before and after the slash indicating how many cards you have and what your maximum is. Um, and when, if let's say I was over my maximum, I would drag the different cards down and then you see that I, now I'm under my maximum, so I'd wanna add one back. This is the starting layout, by the way, this is assuming uh, brand new characters. So everything is just very basic. Now at the bottom, you can click View All, and it will show you all the different cards amongst everyone's layouts. This is the part that I find not that intuitive because there you can have other cards, but they don't actually show up unless you need them and have extra spaces available. It's very strange. Um, but anyways, I kind of digress. That is the screen that you would go to to see how all of the uh, to see all the different characters' decks and to make adjustments. So let's gonna, gonna go ahead and start off the adventure. So again, you're gonna click on the blue triangle off to the side, the blue arrow, I keep calling them triangles, that will start the adventure with the party that you've selected and the loadout that they have. Ba -ba -ba, loading screen. Loading can be kind of problematic in this game, but the graphics do look pretty good, even though there's not a lot of animation. 
There are little bits of story interlude, which, by the way, is much more theme than uh, is in the actual game, uh, the physical game. So you can continue or skip through that. I'll just go ahead and show you. Their expressions actually change, I think. Or maybe I'm just seeing things as they get angry or excited in the different parts of the adventure. And every character says different things, and depending on which characters you have in your party, some of them will show up, some of them won't uh, in the character interactions. Although I think the townsfolk always say the same thing, no matter who is speaking back to them. So here you start the scenario, it will remind you what actually happened. So in this scenario, if a monster's power causes you to recharge one or more cards, you do so, then draw the same number of cards. Ba ba ba. So there's Jubrail, the villain. It's just showing you your targets. There's this bandit henchman. And you see they're getting shuffled about and thrown out into each of the different locations, which of course changes based on the number of players. Uh, so this is actually a very intuitive thing here. By the way, one uh, upside of the game is that you don't have to worry about making all of these decks ahead of time with the loadout of cards. You will see up in the top left corner um, all of the different icons for the different types of cards, which um, they break down uh, for you in the tutorial as well. But you have monsters, barriers, weapons, spells, uh, armor, items, allies, blessings, and question mark. Question mark, of course, being the henchman and the villain, but you're not sure where the villain is as opposed to the henchman. But at each of these things, uh, as I click on them, you see the at this location effects, uh, when closing effects, and the when permanently closed effects, if any. Uh, most of them do not, or some of them do. Um, and so that's that. You also remember you, down in the bottom right corner, you always have uh, the two icons you can click in order to uh, check the loadout of your characters and who you're actually using. Now, uh, same thing here, drag and drop as opposed to, as to where you want your characters to go. So I'll give some thought into this at least. Succeed so an intelligence or arcane check. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put my arcane user there uh, to close the location. Uh, succeeded a charisma or diplomacy six check. Oh, that's also my arcane user, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and put the fighter here at uh, the farmhouse. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put the person who is good at wisdom in the woods, because why not? and the person who's good at dexterity and stealth, my elf, Merziel, to go to the wooden bridge. So once you've actually made that decision, you're not locked in. I can move them around if I really want to. But boom, bada boom. You can have, I think you can, yeah. I hardly ever do it, but yes, you can have multiple people start off at the same location. Uh, I just don't usually recommend that because you're trying, you're running against the clock, of course. Then you have the opportunity to change the turn order. So you can actually move around their portraits and it will do things in a different order. Uh, let's go ahead and give my girl top billing. This is a little not as intuitive as I would like, as you can tell. There you go. Uh, we'll go ahead and go with that. We'll make the man go last. Okay. Nice animation, loading screen, sand point, ba 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 ba. Let's get this annoying thing out of the way as much as possible. More loading screens. Some different loading screens would be nice, I guess. All right, so here's the main screen. You've always got a background portrait that I think looks very good. Oh, look, that's super annoying right there. Let's put it down here where the buried pile that looks like poop is. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to show you that to you. <laughs> um, so you also, you still have the reminder up in the top left corner of your screen as to what the location actually entails up in then you have the deck right next to it with the number of cards up in the top right corner of the screen you have uh, all the different characters including the character you're currently playing and then all the different actions in order um, also the blessing deck is indicated where you see the number 29 that's how many blessings are left in the deck and what the current blessing is in the discard pile again i am assuming a lot of um a lot of knowledge of the physical card game ahead of this so i apologize if you don't know what the hell any of this means at the bottom of the screen, you have your hand of cards uh, randomly determined, of course, and you draw up to whatever your hand limit is. In the very bottom right corner of the screen are special abilities. My special ability, which is a little flame, is not currently active because I don't have, I'm not encountering anything quite yet. 
Uh, but let's go ahead and make that happen. So actually, if you look up at the top left corner of the screen at the list of actions, the first thing you see is a hand giving a card. That would assume that there was another character in my location. If there was, that first action would be handing off a card to another person, but there's not. So the next action is my one explore for the round. So I'll go ahead and click that card. Bada boom, bada bing. Uh, you see tooltips come up because I've started a new game, which is super annoying. Get rid of that. How do I get rid of that? It's not going away. Oh, I see. This is telling me that a character can help. So I can go ahead and click over there. Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. I know that he will give a die uh, with his special ability and so on and so forth. That's why I'm starting off with that. Well, let's go ahead and go back. I'm sorry, the fighter gives a bonus to uh, combat checks. So this is just a simple check to pick up the spell or not. If I want to, you see at the bottom of the screen there are my blessings that are highlighted because I can use them at this point. The game is very intuitive in letting you know when you can use things and giving you the appropriate options. So in this case, I can simply discard to get another die to the check, um, which I will do. I would not normally do because I don't care about the stupid Detect Evil spell. But uh, I'll do it anyways and see if I succeed. Now, two dice pop up because that's the amount of dice that I have. Now, underneath the top of the screen, you see it says Detect Evil, and it says Wisdom, and then it says the, the four, which is the check I need to make. Now, what I can do is click on that Wisdom, and then a little pull-down comes down with the different types of checks I'm allowed to make. I could decide to do a Divine check as well. If I do that, however... Well, let me click on it. There you go. You'll see that my dice change to D4s because for Divine, I roll D4. So that's worse. The game always starts you off with what they think is the best possible option, but you may change that if you want based on whatever factors are influencing your decision, of course. Also very important to note, over on the top uh, or in the middle left of the screen, you'll see an X, which means I can take back my decision. I can click that X and boom, my blessing is back. Now, that doesn't always happen. Of course, it has to be, just like in the real game, the game state hasn't changed. So I haven't rolled any dice yet. I haven't come to any uh, unreversible uh, decisions. So I'm going to roll them. So basically, to roll the dice, you simply click on the dice and shove them off screen or pretend that you are. I got a four. Boom. Spell goes into my hand because I successfully gained it. So now, if I want to, can click on this, discard this guy because no one likes the Troubadour, and now I can explore again. That's what that card enabled me to do. I want to get into a combat. Alright, this is that tooltip is telling me what I just was explaining to you. I failed, so the number is red, and it disappears. Dun dun dun. Alright, I want to get into a combat, but I'll go ahead and end my round anyways. Let's go to Kyra. So you see it automatically goes to the next person in turn order. No animation or loading screen there. There's a combat. So, uh, let's see. I don't actually have any spells on me. The fighter's probably better for this. But, okay, so get out of my way, icon. You see I can discard this. I'll add one automatically to my check. So you saw that number in red went up. And now I'm going to add, and add another die because I really want to kill this thing and not embarrass myself on camera. Now the ghoul, you can click on the card and it goes to the center so you can get a better look at it. This looks exactly like the physical card. So says the goal is immune to mental and poison traits. If undefeated, reset your hand and end your turn. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this dice and probably kill him. But the game is very random. All right, my screen is kind of locking up. There it goes. I obliterated him. Now, here's an interesting thing. Uh, as you know, may know in the physical game, cards can recharge quite a bit. Or if you want to, you can discard them. So I'm going to choose to recharge my guidance, which I think it will basically be automatic. So I'm going to click recharge eventually. I really should turn off those stupid tooltips. Ah, I did fail. It's only automatic with my buffed up cleric. Yes, as I said, the game is very random. So let's go ahead and get rid of those tool tips because that's super annoying. Tips off. Thank you. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and end my turn with her. So you see she automatically draws back up to her hand limit. And we go to the next one. See a little animation in the background? The wood plank moving slightly. Isn't that amazing? Graphics only the 1990s could bring you. That's not true. 
I'm going to explore. There's an ally. Now, another ugh, stupid icon. Now, you will notice up in the top left corner of the screen, uh, in the location section where it tells you the details, there's another thing that's flashing. That's because it's giving me a new option. Now, if I want to, as long as that's flashing and highlighted, I can click on that and do something. In this case, discard two cards to evade an encounter. No reason for me to do that with an ally archer. So I'm just going to roll my dexterity, fail miserably, and watch it disappear into the great void. I want to get to my fighter just because I want to show you each of the different landscapes. There you go. This is the farmhouse. All right, so... I'll fail on that. No point in even getting another die. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, and then I can shuffle it or banish it. So I'll shuffle it back in. Why not? Uh, but basically, that's how the game works. It's pretty intuitive. You just click the cards that you want. You use the special abilities as the case may be. Everything is drag and drop. Everything is click and see. You can even click the icon to remind yourself uh, on a location of what the special abilities are for it. Um, all right, let's fast forward in time a bit, and I'll show you what it's like to close a location. All right, so I am going to hope here, uh, appropriately enough with Sioni, my favorite character, that I'm going to obliterate this bandit and therefore win. Now, in this particular case, because I have an invisibility spell in my hand, uh, which will potentially allow me to evade a monster, I am giving the option to encounter or evade. This is, again, where the system is very intuitive in letting me potentially do that. But instead, I'm going to choose to evade, or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to choose to encounter by clicking on the sword on the right-hand side of my screen. So I do that. Uh, now a bandit makes me recharge a card, whether I like it or not. I'm going to go ahead and recharge my bracers because I don't think I'll need them. So recharge means put back underneath the deck. Go ahead and click the icon again, meaning to move forward, meaning my choice is locked in. A D4, I'm probably going to lose this battle. Psych. So I'm going to click on her special ability icon in the bottom corner. That icon will pop up. I have to discard a card. Let's get rid of my potion of fortitude because who cares? And boom, now things are a different game. And I really want to make sure I win this because the game is super random. So I will discard my Blessing of the Gods to add another D12 to that. And hopefully I won't embarrass myself here. And I did not. So I uh, left a smoking crater where that bandit used to be. And now I can close the location because that was one of the conditions was uh, defeating one of the henchmen. Uh, now, hopefully I will make this. I do have another Blessing of the Gods. I have to succeed in an Intelligence or Arcane 6 check. So I could not close it if I don't want to, which if, would happen if I wanted to continue to explore this location and get more cards, but I want to. So I'm going to click Yes. I will go ahead and try my best to make sure I succeed on this. I'm starting off with four, essentially, because I can't roll less than one on each of these. So I just need to get a little bit better than that. Let's roll the dice. Swiping is not working. I think the recording is actually slowing down my app. Boom! I left another smoking crater somehow. And now you see all those cards go away. The location is closed. And I will go ahead and click the arrow on the right, indicating that my turn is done. I reload my hand. Goes to the next player. But uh, let's see. I'm going to choose to oh by the way this is the move icon not the explore icon i screwed that up before so let's say i did want to move you'll notice here there's an x over sioni's location that means it's closed uh but it's actually very easy to navigate around the map and now i can just go ahead and i'll move over to here double click it boom and i am there my friend and that's that so very easy. I'll just show you how the spell works real quick. Reveal it. This is a cure. Roll the die. Boom. Three cards go back in. And I can continue on my merry way. Recharge check. All right. Well, I think that's a, just a, a, a good enough taste of what to expect from the game. So let's go ahead and we're going to not do that again. Uh, I am not liking that icon. That's a little bit of inside baseball. I'm going to forfeit just to show you what it looks like. If you're doing permadeath, I don't recommend doing that. But forfeit, notice that the blessings up in the top corner are running out like, oh no, we're hemorrhaging blessings. Boom. Done. 
Game will end shortly. Party has run out of time. Let's get that out of the way. More loading. Here's the screen I was talking about before. So now we're back. Uh, we quit prematurely, but even if you quit prematurely, you still have uh, potential to uh, modify your inventory. So I gained a spell, this Detect Evil spell, which I showed you before, but I'm one spell heavy. So I'm going to drag that down and get rid of it. But I'm done with her. Notice that all <laughs> I'm done with her. Notice that all of her stats now have no red, so everything seems to be legit. But there's an exclamation point on my uh, dude fighter, and that's because he grabs an item, which puts him over the limit. This was off screen, by the way. You didn't see that. So I'm going to drag down the potion of hiding because I don't want that. That puts me back at my limit. Uh, so now, let's say, I think this will work. Let's say I want a different ally. Oh, it won't let me do it. See, that's what I find very unintuitive about this. This is my first uh, major complaint. But anyways, that's done. So now it should take me back to the main screen. Or actually, no, it takes me back to the adventure screen. But I want to go back to the back. So I'm going to quit the game, which doesn't take me out of the app. It just takes me back to the main screen. So now I'm going to show you some other things. So first off, you have questing. The music is back. Uh, questing is basically just going on like some random quests sort of disassociated with the main um, storyline. It enables you basically to get more gold and to get more items and things. At least I haven't delved into it that much to be honest, but that was my impression of it. Uh, so you see uh, multiplayer is a thing that has not yet come, but would be pretty cool. If I click on continue, that uh, should take me to the last campaign that I was actually uh, involved in. Or the last thing I was attempting to do. So there's that. Uh, let's go back. You don't need to see all that. Let's go to the store. Because this is where the app app part comes. The the very appy thing. So, first, there's a bundle available. It says it's like a special. I have a feeling this will be available forever. but Or at least it should be. Essentially, you don't see the price anymore because I bought it. It's $24.99. Gets you everything. Every adventure for the Rise of the Rune Lords. Every character. Special promos. A character add-on deck with more boons and banes. Um, and so on. If you plan on playing the game, you're probably just going to have to get it. Because the interesting part of this is, um, what you also don't see here is that you could have spent gold. So, uh, for instance, here you'll see there's a gold cost over on the top right, of, on the, the bottom right of the screen. Well, that stuff was also for the adventure paths as well. And it's a lot of gold, and it takes a long time to build up. So it's probably not worth it, and you should probably just buy the main thing. If you like the game, I do. Okay, here's a description of all the different adventures that are available. This is 80% off, because if you'd bought it on its own, it would have been a lot cheaper. Here's all the different characters that come in the set, um, with a brief description of each of them, should you be so inclined. Now, treasure. This is an interesting thing. Uh, I think you get a free one. I had one, and I think it was just a free one that you gain when you first start the game. Um, it basically just adds new a new allotment of cards to the game for you to potentially come across in your travels. And you get discounts as you go up. See how much gold that is? That's a lot. I've been playing this game a lot, and I've only got 1,908. What a good year. And then over here we have gold. Now, this is where things get a little bit... Uh, 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 the things that people find annoying about pay-to-play games. So, uh, what the reason this says daily gold for a dollar ninety-nine, you can enable daily gold, which means that for the next thirty days, every day if you log in, you get two hundred gold. Okay, which means if you logged in all thirty days, you'd get six thousand gold. How many people are actually going to do that? I mean, the app hasn't even been around for thirty days, but I mean, how many people will actually do that? I don't know. But it sounds like a very interesting scam they got going on. Uh, that's a harsh word. But you can buy more gold, of course. Of course! So that's it. That's it for all the store. Uh, and then you saw my little countdown there for the amount of gold. But Okay, that's it. Um, there's more icons down here and things like that. We can just go ahead and click on this as I talk. This is the gallery of different cards and different things that you've run into. So... What do I think about this in total and in, in summary? 
I like it a lot. Um, I actually am debating with myself whether or not if it stays like it is, if um, I stay engaged with the content. I'm going to turn on the music at this point. Um, is it just going to go ahead and replace the physical game for me? Because it really is the core game. They really didn't compromise much at all with this, if anything. And so, uh, yeah, I could see myself just not bothering with the physical game ever again if this stays as engaging as it has been now. Now, I will say that I have not run into uh, any of the bugs that a lot of people, especially in the reviews in the uh, Play Store, um, have been uh, coming up about this game. I just haven't had any of those problems because I think there was a patch right before I started playing the game. Um, a couple of little things happened, but not even anything worth mentioning. So that could influence your decision if perhaps on the iOS, if that's the device you're using, as opposed to Android for myself, if that one is still having buggy problems. I don't know. Uh, so I haven't had that, and it's just worked out very well. Um, uh, some of the core problems of the physical game were transferred over because it is a faithful adaptation. It is incredibly random. It can be very frustrating. Sometimes you lose just because the very first thing you do is draw the villain from the first location your first character goes to, and you roll incredibly poorly, and that character is almost on death's door right away. Uh, that kind of stuff can just happen. You saw there's a lot of load screens, very long, especially since there's not a ton of animation. It's just very high-quality artwork. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. I wish there was more animations and things like that. When you shoot someone with fire, little bits of fire come out, but that's about it. Um, and also, I don't know. I, I mean, I really think that twenty four ninety nine for it, to unlock basically the entire game as it is now is pretty good. Now, I don't think every scenario is actually released yet, but you will have access to them as they are released. And if you like the game, I think $24.99 is kind of a steal. How much further you want to go into it, buying getting gold, buying gold essentially with real money in order to get more chests, that's up to you. I would say you don't have to bother. I think there's quite enough content as it is. Um, but having the extra characters from buying the Rune Lord set is... Uh, pretty good and gives you a lot of variety. Um, I'm very curious as to like how I'm going to jump back into my main campaign, if that's even possible. Whether I sacrifice my main campaign just to show you this, I don't know. So there are little things like that that are not intuitive, having to do with just the logistics of jumping around between the different menus. I showed you with the items. Um, I wasn't totally thrilled with how that happened. Uh, but it looks like I can just jump right back into it. So yeah, I am Rise of the Rune Lords Burnt Offerings is where I left off. So yeah, uh, that stuff is fine. That just kind of comes with time. Um, so overall, I think it's a very good app. I think that if you're a fan of the physical card game, you're going to enjoy being able to play this whenever you want to, unless you're one of those wackos. That, that's a harsh word. Um, uh, different people who... <laughs> <laughs> who actually play an organized play for Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, more power to you. I just I can't fathom uh, that, but it's very interesting. But people like that are probably not going to be able to be swayed by the app. But for people like me who just found it logistically difficult to play the physical card game or who only played it solo to begin with, I think this is a really good option, and it's done pretty well, surprisingly faithful, probably too faithful for people who just stumble upon it in the app store and are like, what the hell is this? But for people coming from the physical tabletop world, I think it's a uh, very good choice. So that is the Pathfinder Adventures is the name of this. Pathfinder Adventures based on the Pathfinder Adventure card game, which is itself based off of the Pathfinder RPG, which is itself Dungeons & Dragons 3.75. Don't get me started. I recommend it. I like it. Um logistical problems and all I think it's a pretty faithful reproduction thanks for watching follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Patreon and make sure to check out our sponsor Board Game Bliss where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world BoardGameBliss.com thanks for your support